Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, a bunch of stories have dropped along with some updates on the RTX 4090 connector that I really figured this format would do better in. Either way, starting things off, Nvidia released new GPUs. RTX 4080 benchmarks, we finally know why the 4090 connectors are melting. RTX 5000 goes three nanometers. And here we go, RX 7000. But first with AMD's RX 7000 announcement right around the corner, make sure you know right when they're actually releasing with Meld Alerts. My completely free newsletter that sends you an email when new PC hardware is released. Because let's be honest, keeping up with all the hardware releases can be tricky. And don't worry, I only let you know about the important stuff like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Plus, I'll send you great deals as those come out as well. That way you don't have to worry when new stuff is releasing. Plus, I may start sending build suggestions as well. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Either way, it's completely free at meldalerts.com, so check that out today. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, hidden in NVIDIA's new Game Ready Driver release, we see that they actually announce a couple new GPUs. As you can see right here, they state, to give more chances to gamers and creators, we're introducing a couple of additional options for our network of graphics card partners worldwide starting in November. So these aren't released yet, but they're coming pretty soon. Either way, we first have the 3060 Ti with GDDR6X memory. Now they say faster 3060 Ti, I'm assuming it has essentially the same specs, but just has GDDR6X instead of regular GDDR6. Now they do state that it's in addition to the original version with GDDR6 memory, meaning it isn't replacing the regular GDDR6 card. They also say second is a RTX 3060 with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Whether that's gonna be replacing the regular 3060, I'm not. Whether that's gonna be replacing the regular 3060, I'm not sure, but they don't also say in addition. Of course, this isn't really a big surprise. We know that Nvidia has a pretty big backlog of their RTX 3000 cards, which is why they only release the really high-end cards for the 4000 series, but obviously they are going to be releasing new 4000 series cards to replace these, but then again, as we've seen, they effectively up the prices significantly anyway, so these could be a pretty good deal even when the cards that replace them are released. And to better show that, we actually have some new benchmarks on the unlaunched RTX 4080 12 gigabyte variant. What's interesting about this is that, well, it really goes to show just how absurd it was that Nvidia released this as a 4080. But obviously that was almost certainly just so they could sell it for more. Either way, as we go down here, we can see that some 3D Mark benchmarks were leaked out on the Chipel forum of that 4080 12 gigabyte model. And when we compare these two other cards, we can first see that the 4080 gets beat by the 3090 Ti in pretty much every single one one of these benchmarks. In fact, let's see, in this one right here, Speedway, the regular 3090 beat it. Even the 3080 Ti gets really close. Now it doesn't beat it, but we're talking a margin of error difference here. We're talking 1%. Then we move down to the 12 gigabyte 3080 and just a few percent difference here as well. Once again, proving that this 4080 is barely an upgrade of her last gen's 3080 and is essentially like a 3080 Ti. Moving on down here, we can see as well the 12 gigabyte model is slightly beating the 3090 here and 3080 Ti. It does do quite a bit better than the regular 3080 here. Then with Times by Extreme, it's right at, so it does do a bit better here, though just barely. And as we can see, it's very similar to even say the 3080 Ti, we're talking once again, just a few percent. Basically, at least to me, this just more proves what we already knew, that this should have never been called a 4080, should have been a 4070, and obviously significantly cheaper. And next up for today, while talking RTX 4000 cards, we have a really big, actually multiple updates on 
the issues with the RTX 4090. If you haven't been following along with this story, quite a bit of users have shared that their 16-pin connector has effectively melted. When we look right here, we can actually see that there are, well, there are a couple news stories. Yet again, we can see all these updates basically every day with news stories, but you can see right here that the adapter has been melted. Well, it looks like we do have the culprit. According to Igor's lab, when we move down here, we can see that he states, this is the uh, adapter right here, and we actually see the four wires. He's ultimately talking about these top four wires, and you can see he states that a total of four 14 gauge wires are distributed over a total of six contacts, with the two outer leads soldered to one pin each, and the two middle leads soldered to two pins each. The solder base is a mere 0.2 millimeter thin copper base with a width of 2 millimeter per incoming wire, which then results in 4 millimeter per pair for the middle connections. Soldering one or even two of them to this is very, he said sporty, or at least this I do believe is a translation, um, so I'm pretty sure it's meant to say spotty. Either way, when we move down here, he says just carefully lifting off the enveloping layer causes the thin plate to tear immediately. We can see it down here. So basically these wires are almost immediately pulled out. And effectively what he's saying is that that explains why with these leaked PCI SIG graphs that basically they're suggesting do not bend either near, well specifically they mentioned side bends near the actual connector itself because what's ultimately happening is that when you do these bins, it's slightly pulling out one or more of the pins, causing higher resistance. And if you know anything about electricity, you know that it goes where the least resistance is. So a ton of that really high wattage is going to just a few pins rather than across all of the upper ones. Now, I will state that there are a couple somewhat minor issues with this. He basically states that the regular PCI Express 5.0 connector is fine. It's really just in these adapters that basically adapt up to four uh, eight pin connectors into the 16 pin connector that goes into the GPU. But one issue is that we may not have seen these yet just because almost no one has them. Native cables for these are really only on a couple PSUs. So there isn't a large enough sample size to see if it does this. Obviously some tests could be made, but with that said, given it does seem like there's some serious design issues specifically with this adapter, it is almost certainly that. Another slight issue is that he mentions that it's only in one row of connectors, but we can see that it actually shows it in both rows. We have the bottom row right here where that messed up, and then right here is the top row. Not only that, they actually stated multiple suppliers and designs have failed, meaning at least according to this, it isn't just one design, just one adapter. Now, I do think almost all the adapters right now are made by NVIDIA, so maybe that's what they mean, but when we go back here, we can see, he states, we are only interested in the upper six yellow connections of the connector, including the bridge. All 12 pins are still connected to each other, and then also, once again, to the four feeding wires. So, it effectively sounds like the main issue is the top one, and maybe that actually is still the case, um, but just having that top one fail can potentially cause the bottom ones to fail. That absolutely could be what it is, so it easily could still be this issue. I just thought I'd kind of point that out. But basically, as of now, it seems like it's almost certainly these adapters. Now, with that said, we do have some good news as NVIDIA is apparently telling AICs to collect the RTX 4090 cards. And we actually see right here that one person claims from Hardware Lux's forum, it says Gigabyte sending me a new card as soon as the old one is with them. So it definitely does seem like at least Gigabyte and hopefully all the manufacturers are going to be replacing these cards that end up getting damaged, which is of course what we would expect. I seriously don't think they try to argue that it's the user's fault for bending the cable near the connector. That to me just seems absolutely absurd. There's tons of cases, tons of different configurations where you need to bend the cable right there and we've pretty much all done it but like I said luckily it does look like Nvidia is taking this seriously and they are in fact 
examining this and hopefully we're going to have a fix but until then if you do have an rtx 4090 please do not bend any cords near the connectors and next up, while NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series still isn't fully here, they've only technically released one GPU, it looks like we're getting new information on their next-gen cards. As you can see right here, a report from My Drivers states that NVIDIA's CEO recently paid a visit to Taiwan to meet with top executives of TSMC. Of course, we know that NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series is based on TSMC's, I believe it's four nanometers, so it's not surprising that they would go with TSMC yet again. But what's really interesting about this is that we can see here that they are trying to secure three nanometer wafers. It says it down here that they're trying to ensure three nanometer orders at TSMC for their next gen GPUs. Basically, this seems to suggest that Nvidia is planning to go with three nanometers for their next gen RTX 5000 GPUs. Of course, that is quite a ways away from now, but I have no doubt they have some pretty large teams that work on that and they've probably been at work on it for quite a while already. So I have no doubt that they probably already know which process they're going to be going with. And lastly for today, AMD's RX 7000 GPUs are on the way. We know in just a few days they're going to be announcing it. And you can actually see that Graymon 55 claims that the actual release, so this is not just an announcement, but a release, has been delayed to about a week. And I will go ahead and say I don't have it right here, but I have seen where he states that there isn't any kind of hardware issue or anything like that. It could be one of a thousand reasons they would delay it, but they are apparently still going to be announcing it. It's just not going to be released until December, specifically Graymon 55 states sometime between December 1st through the 5th. Basically, the cards are right around the corner, and of course, we already know that they aren't going to be using these new connectors, so I wouldn't worry too much about connectors melting or anything like that, like we've seen with the 4090. Really though, like I've said more than once, I personally think that the number one thing AMD has to get right is pricing. Even if they're not as powerful, if they're significantly cheaper, I certainly think they would have a huge win. So while that does it for today, how excited are you for AMD's next-gen RX 7000? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to check out Meld Alerts at meldalerts.com. And as always, have a great day.